Hi there, how's it? In the name of Christ, how are you doing? It's Garabo, girl, crank here, all that jazz. I hope you're good, I hope you're peachy, I hope you're stellar, and I hope you're in a neat little bunch. If you're not, welcome to the party. We're all just kind of out of it. Uh, let me just first put some caveats out there. Beware the captions. They are not always accurate. Sometimes they're misspelled, sometimes it's the wrong word altogether. Sometimes it's a terrible word. I don't have time to edit them, so please have mercy. Uh, if at all you're not perturbed by them, good, but rather just don't look at them. One day is one day, God willing, perhaps I'll get like an editor that'll enable me along with such captions as those. We keep them there because they're cute. Okay, secondly, um, what do I want to say? Second thing that I want to say is... Um, um, I'm wearing makeup. Application makeup may or may not be. If I chose to wear it, you'll know because it's like bouncing off my face. I like it. It's cute. So I keep it. But just be warned, it's going to be doing a thing. Uh, what else? This here is to scratch my head just in case I get itchy in case you were wondering. So hi there. Um, I'm also human and I evidence that I'm human by like pinching my cheeks uh and singing a song but i'm not in the mood of singing because my heart's broken i'm only human after all i'm only human after all i'm only human after all so stop taking jabs at me yeah i just blushed my cheeks that shows that i've got blood and that when you prick me, I bleed. So stop doing it. Okay. Uh, what else? It's hot. So we have a fan. And it works. So I'm in. Anyway, uh, I think we should just get to the point. I don't know what under heaven it is that I'm leaving out. I feel like I'm leaving something out. But if I am... Oh yeah, my white crossed sunscreen. Beware the white crossed sunscreen. Uh, yeah, it, it makes me look all ashy gray and misty blue and dyes my brows too, so... Hmm. Look out for that. I, I did, it's not a plan to be so gray and give R.I.P. It's just not. Anyway, look, let's just get to the point, alright? Actually, I don't even know what. I'm gonna talk about except I do so about when oh it's gonna rain outside I can hear the thunderings and the rumblings but that's just been the thing it's been happening off late it's been rumbling and thundering because South Africa is going down a toilet and it's being flashed and it's spinning like in a whirlwind vroom 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 and everybody's sleeping <laughs> yeah except those that aren't Anywho, so there's rumblings outside. Look out for that. Y'all, you're is about to have a horrible time. So this is, of course, not sustainable. I've been saying it. I keep seeing images of myself being on a cross like Christ dying. Well, there's like a thief repenting on the left. It's like, you know, guy, good, repent. But as for me, die, shmai. That's not happening. Uh, however, just the fact that there is like an attempt at such a thing as that like hurt much that's you struggling much that's you suffering much that's you r.i.p much that's you cold bed much that's you mortuary much that's you cadaver much that's you scientific experiment much again that's you Cause I ain't going nowhere. I'm just saying. I'm not bothering. But as for that thief in the con the cross dying next to me on some accessory, congrats. Finally got it. Looks like I'm reaching some occult beasts. So I have a theory. And my theory is likely the right one. I ain't dying, but I got an occult beast on the left of me on a cross as I am apparently RIPing much. Nah. That's you, not me. 
on some I'm so sorry I did this to you looks like we're all gonna die but I choose Jesus occult beast look Christ forgives you know not what you do so congratulations for repentance but nah get in the Bible occult beast please get in the Bible whoever this person is that's been watching my content that is among my perps perpetrators are doing these streets are costing a sister okay Yo, it's water under the bridge, it's all good in the hood, see you in heaven one day, but not yet. Ain't nobody here at Golgotha, like, ain't nobody. Anyway, we're gonna get to a point, ultimately. Hanamu to Oyang Golgotha, place of the skull. So, thief on the cross, like I said, congratulations. Heaven re rejoices when one sinner repents. So, rah, rah, to you. But, like, get down from that cross, because you ain't on it. It's literally that basic. We're getting out of here via the River Jordan, not via the cross at Golgotha. Understand that's a thing. South Africans, with all of your massacring of the body of Christ, hmm. Look at Karabo snatching one of your little menacing monsters out from the flames. You're in trouble. Like, people want to get out of this stuff. Y'all gotta know that's a thing. But nah. You're sitting where you're sitting imaginative. That I is ceasing to be. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I apologize. That's not a thing that's happening. Listen up, alright? So like a couple of weeks ago, guys, it's been weeks. Like, it's so disturbing. Couple of weeks ago, I'm out here trying to look cute. You might even observe if you go back in my videos and make this like, you know, notification. See it as a thing. I wore these earrings. I found them in my mother's stash. Like, you know when you go to Discam or maybe like some China Mart? Pep or Foshini, I don't know. Sometimes they be out here selling these Mokokotela earrings. Avam Tribulo, much like some Christianity in these streets. Mm. And there's like a lot of them. Like a lot of earrings, like a lot of studs, you know what I'm saying? Out here wondering, why has my mother forsaken this marvelous jewelry my mother likes jewelry as do i i have ceased wearing it however because i don't have a job i'm going nowhere my life sucks all the jewelry you see on my face and on my ears i sleep in it it's always there i don't change it out i cannot go recently however i did change this out but like that was once in a like blue moon but jewelry that i have to like actually hang on myself every day like clothes on a hanger nah not doing that anymore one day's one day i got these holes for a reason somebody gotta put some jewelry in them mm. but i'm not yet there however when I was busy scrummaging through my mom's stuff, I don't know what I was looking for. I think just curiosity killed a cat. Every time she goes out, leaves, goes wherever, um, and I'm alone in the house, I don't know what to do with myself. I'm always spinning on the spot, so I just open drawers to see what's in there. Mm. <coughs> Look at what you made my life, eh? It's like I'm pillaging and looting now. I'm plundering. Anyway, whatever. <coughs> That's what happens when you mess with people's lives and you put them in poverty. When the rich are not home, they go through their stuff. Nah, but I ain't that girl like fully though, please. I have not quite been demoted there yet, but hitting the ground running, headed for it. That's what's good. Out here impoverishing a country. Disgusting. Anyway, so I was just scratching through drawers. And then I happened upon this like 12, 24 pack. I don't know. Could have been two dozens or maybe just one dozen little tray of earrings e masa lady studs like you know that those ones that you find in exactly like a setup like this but like it's all cute and white and there are like pairs of like earrings on it yeah there's like two studs here of a tiny little pea sized and then there's two studs here that are the size of like a full stop and then etc and like it's just a whole bunch of earrings and there's two pearls and there's two this and two that and yeah cool that whole thing, you know how you buy them? Go my Pepe, go my Foshini, Mr. Price. You get it at like Edgar's. You get stuff like that. Um, sometimes even at Lovisa. But I shall not speak to Lovisa because Lovisa is a jewelry store. And their stuff does not tend to, you know, fasciitis up an ear. 
Uh, so we shall leave Lovisa out of this because so far so good with them. All right. Mm. These little eerie, these eerie my bobbies. I found something of that nature in my mom's little one of the little drawers that she has, right? And I'm like, I wonder why these earrings are not sitting with all the other earrings that she buys. Why she has not unraveled all of them? Why she has not unscrewed all of them? You know? Uh, why are some still here? Because these are perfectly good earrings and they were all gold and you know study they were studs like just regular good old-fashioned tiny sized studs that go in your lobes mm. and I was like ah if she doesn't want them I'll take them because y'all made me that looting plundering taking booty random vagrant in these streets that's bordering on homelessness so thank you Anyway, whatever. So I took them on some. Maybe I'll just put some studs on my earrings, on on my lobes, my my lower lobes. The 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 fantuka, the original that's always been here. The hole that's always been there from the time I was like what four or whatever. Yeah, the rest of these uh came when I was much older. But the low low lobe thing, yeah, that I have abandoned for a couple of years. It's just kind of been sitting there because I don't go anywhere, right? People make sure that's a thing. Anywho, so I grabbed them on some. Let me just put these studs there and I might even sleep in them and not take them out since I'm so lazy to change out earrings and what have you because they're just studs and they are on my lobes and I'm used to sleeping with earrings on my ear. But not the sharp kinds though, just the ones with like flat backs and round bolty my bobbies. Yeah, I can sleep in that because it doesn't afflict me when I sleep. Mara, I was ambitious so I took them. And I opened them immediately right there in the bedroom, in my mom's bed. It was around, yes, a couple of weeks ago I said that, right? So it was exactly, uh, like, was it Christmas or New Year's? One of, like, you know how I was alone on Christmas on the property? And I was also alone on New Year's Eve. It was uh, around that time when I was all by myself and there was nobody here. Yeah, so just the la latter part of last year, the very end of last year. Mm. I grab these and I just plonk them on my ears. You might be able to observe in one in the videos that I did around that time. Maybe I uploaded it on the 31st of Jan or even on of, of December. Sorry, or on the 25th or the 26th or the 27th. I was wearing two studs that you could see because they were shiny and glistening on my lobes. Mm. I wore those guys. And within like just a couple of hours, maybe even just one hour, 45 minutes, I started to feel disquieted and uncomfortable like on both ears. I thought that maybe nekiritzipile, like I had pinched myself. Yeah. So I loosened them at the back a little bit to make them a little bit more free because I wanted to have those on my ears for my videos and I wanted to just keep them on. I wanted to just keep them on. I told myself that this will flee. I haven't put earrings there in a minute. So that's why in that place. That's why it's kind of, you know, it, burn, it burns like, it sort of kind of burns in that environment. So I, I kept them there. As the hours progressed, it would get better, but then it would come back again and feel uncomfortable. Like my ear was basically going guang guang guang. If I was a white girl, it might have even looked red altogether. Okay. But I kept them there. I kept those earrings there, I did my videos, I insisted I believe on sleeping in those earrings overnight. Next morning I wake up and it still feels okay but somewhere along the way in the day it doesn't feel that okay anymore. And then I finally make a decision, I sugar no way and I took them off, okay? When I took those earrings off, guys, I only wore them like 24 hours, like yeah, about 24 exact hours. Because I took them off the next day, later on in the day, more or less around the same time that I put them on. These earrings were on my ears for 24 hours. Within the first hour and a half, I was starting, I was starting to burn. Anywho, and when I looked at the uh, the nail, the needle, the, the, the long part, yeah, the one that goes into your hole, right? Yeah, of the earring. Both of them, they, they went from gold, guys, to rusted. Mezirusile. Rust. They were rusted. They rusted in my ear. When I put them on, they were gold. I guess gold plated. Because obviously that's not gold. Real gold. And then they went in my ear and they rusted. They rusted. And that's what was itching. That's what was burning. 
That's what made me realize, I guess, that's the reason why my mother abandoned them. That's why she wasn't interested in continuing to use that set anymore. She left it there for it to gather dust and I decided to find it and loot it or plunder it. And because I plundered it, I guess I got punishment for plundering it, didn't I? Because here it is that I was like RJ getting eaten away at my ear. Fine, so they rusted. That part is brownish instead of gold anymore. So I just put them down on some lazy, lazy, whatever. Never in my life. I promise you, I'm, I, I'm not, I don't have allergies, guys. I'm not that girl. I don't suddenly get, you know, puffy eyed around pollen or anything. I, I don't have an allergy issue. Never in my life have I ever had allergies uh, with anything. If anything, I kind of low key coveted kids that had allergies because I thought it was, you know, it made them unique. I know that's weird, but I, I, I coveted it when they were all sneezy in like spring. It's like, ah, you're allergic to pollen. Oh, you're so blessed. Whatever. I, I thought it was, it made a person unique. Anyway. I always coveted them but I didn't really have them. Sinuses and whatnot. I, there was a time when I was, I claimed I've got sinusitis because of allergies. Cause like I said, I used to covet allergies cause I never had them. I was never that sickly kid. Nothing ever did anything to me. So I, I've had my fair share of mkokotelam dubolo, fake jewelry on my neck. I've had that stuff on my ear. I've had that stuff anywhere where I could put it. Like, I thoroughly have a history of going to Chinatown to buy a myriad of earrings because I liked jewelry. I told you guys I love jewelry. Just, yeah, cheap, like necklaces, everything. God, made out from Trata. I can save it. Yo, for me, it was like it doesn't have to be expensive, like proper. You're wasting money on diamonds, you're wasting money on gold. Just get something fake and look at it. Like, fake it till you make it. Like, yeah, I've been faking it till I make it. Precisely because I don't have allergies. I've known of women back in the day who claimed, like, friends, that, yo, nah, I can't wear fake jewelry because then, yang, ja, ing, ja, tebe. And I was like, ooh, and nah, nah, whatever, you're a snob. You're a liar. Okay, whatever. I never had allergies. I've been buying fake jewelry all my life never had allergies i would wear that stuff all day it would dangle on my ears it would just dangle and, and on my neck it was just dangle and i would take it off and there would be no red track marks nothing on me i survive my life is a survival life and i guess that's why i can live in the strange environment i don't have allergies if i had allergies this place would have probably made me break out into hives i don't know i'm just really good about that thank you jesus right he saw that the day would arrive when i would be put in an environment that i wouldn't be able to clean properly and so he made sure that i can just live in a whole bunch of random nothingness and still look good okay cool beans and bananas so now that you have that medical history allow me to put this out there something of a phenomenon happened to me yesterday not yesterday this past what do you call it december where i wore that jewelry I had what would be the tantamount or equivalent of an allergic reaction. I had an allergic reaction to jewelry for crying out loud. I had an allergic reaction to jewels like what in the world did people miss with my blood? I don't know. But I don't have that challenge from back in the day. So maybe I've just been made so sensitive with so much pain in my body. I've just had so much alterations of my genetic makeup i don't well not that can't change unless the lord does it but stuff has changed in me to make me all of a sudden unable to take certain things in my stride that i used to be able to take down perhaps my immune system is breaking down and is falling apart and so i'm not holding fast anymore or whatever under heaven it is that was the material that though that jewelry was made out of was on another level it was a hard knock from kong so heavy that it done did that to me just like my mother well just like me my mother also does not suffer from random allergies and just like me she's also had a history of going to china and She's been buying from my Chinese for a minute. My mom has been buying Dubolo for the longest time ever. I guess that's where I got that from. Okay. And just kind of rolling with it in these streets. Like she is the queen of fake jewelry too. She doesn't have real diamonds, real pearls. She does not have real anything, but it looks real. 
uh right well when by anything i mean like in terms of jewelry other things are real like bags and whatnot but in terms of jewels whatever like ain't nothing real aj in these streets i don't think there is anything that is pure gold all up in that woman's like jewelry chest like nah doesn't exist okay very well so given that my mother has been also putting some fake stuff on her ears dangling it she trusted that she could go and buy that like pack yeah these studs go wherever she bought it okay wherever she bought it and just put these things on her ears and it'll be cool but she ditched them and then i plundered that booty i took it all right she ditched them so either my genetic makeup is transforming which i doubt because that would take like a whole miracle from jesus Oh, my blood, my immune system is crawling and tittering about like a geriatric, which I also doubt because my mom had a similar reaction, obviously, because she dished those earrings for me to find them and die a slow death at that, okay? Or that was just such poor quality jewelry, materials of which are never before seen ever in the history of this nation that is South Africa that is nonetheless being produced out here in these FMCGs and being purchased by some South Africans giving them some strange reactions in a way that historically just was not the case such that some of the healthiest okies out here in these streets with no allergies out here be grabbing some allergies for breakfast, lunch and dinner when they have been good since they was five or something like Something's wrong, Lime Katwene Gutlie. And yet, ain't nobody out there trying to recognize the Guti Gutlie. Alright? These earrings took them off, guys. Lime Pilweni, please, let's talk. Somebody's trying to kill us. I took these earrings off. Like, y'all, somebody gonna die. Y'all, y'all need to. People go out here, pass away. Like, they gonna. RIP, I'm speaking flatline coding. Like, it's giving cold bed cadaver purple skin but like on a mass scale so like it's giving genocide like i'm just saying somebody pinch my nose we need to think coming up on my hair like what yeah it's giving r.i.p genocide it's giving mass extinction event it's giving what in the world are they manufacturing in these factories what hey as in lime got queen here's a here's a cheeky wearing these earrings and two days yes guys it's the 14th of january 2024 i forgot to give you the date i guess it was because i was supposed to give you the date now two weeks later maybe three if i if i wore these earrings got christmas it would be a whole um three weeks but then if it was got new year's then it would be four it would be two weeks so two weeks guys two weeks exactly y'all gonna know you know what like i said it's giving purple skin it's giving ashy gray outward appearance because you've been in the ground like 10 days it's giving maggots it's giving decomposition like it is thoroughly giving microorganisms in the earth a part of your skin because you are now compost it's giving dead chick it's giving like for it's giving lifu tokofezi vibes it's giving casket and it's giving rusing even out of the legacy the way it is so corrosive Y'all need to understand we got some problems out here in these strata. There's issues. But you think we're going to see more tomorrow. Lebalang. Kifilan kare ke halega kosha akire. Tuang mayo na situation. Just let it go. Let go. Let go, guys. Lasang di parachute. Once and for all, don't even try to survive Gazona. Just flat fall ground on the floor and give yourself a RIP. Give yourself for for what a duet. Kadev. Kiriki rang mochuwe guys because at this point there's nothing that matters. Halis by scare skelem suggest I get you're not interested in Jesus Christ. So Kyalangaya Mabitling. Haro Bolokang, let's just go to the cemetery once and for all. It's giving a tombstone. Haro is an unveiling you once. Once. Let's go do unveiling in South Africa. Is that basic? Yeah. Like Kerin no. Like I'm just saying no. Like I disagree. At this point, I, I'm not, I just disagree. I don't even know hurry, what it is that I'm disagreeing about, Nemara. I just know that I disagree. Kaki no. Nyayate. Compost, manure, fertilizer. Out of who? When? Ngoya how? Fere? Can it? Huh? Y'all gonna have some problems. Y'all gonna have some issues. Let's have a discussion. Haritotling. Mm. These earrings, I take them out. 
and it's two weeks later maybe three depending on whether it was christmas or new year's i stand corrected hey guys and just the the within 24 hours heaven is again first of all on the day on the day ne, when i took those earrings off i have these aloe vera uh kitty what do you call them wet wipes the wipes it's a aloe ne? i took one and i Njefela wiped around my ear because it was itching neighbor but that's why i took off those earrings it was itching and i took off those earrings and then i wanted to wipe down the area to what is this disinfected if at all i was infected now this lower lobe of mine hole i told you guys i've had it maybe since i was like i don't even remember getting my ears pierced so it, i could have been like a baby when they put these holes in i don't remember getting them ever pierced they just i grew up and they were there very well now that you understand that that is of course a healed hole it's healed and it's healed long ago and i have dangled a lot of jewelry on it without getting any problems no irritation nothing i'm that non-allergy girl mm. i told you this is giving cold bed anyway whatever right very well ah. this healed hole i'm out here gliding an aloe wipe across my ear and i'm expecting because i've got piercings holes like all across my ear that's what's good so uh when you don't wear jewelry for a minute in your holes that are completely healed every so often when you glide right down them there's gonna be that earwax thing that comes out so there might be a little bit of like brown on the tissue maybe gray whatever that color of that wax it is you might find that so yeah if if you're not constantly cleaning out your ears to make sure all that wax comes out by the time you do you're gonna see it I mean if you feel grossed out yo it's cool pg guide pg 13 parental guidance is advised you can uh, skip past this part or just go watch netflix altogether and forget about me okay yeah so all these things comes out on this thing i, I, I expected to see it that okay it's fine that'll be there because i have not you know went in deep and hard knock muddy saving in a minute all i fit this every single day give us lap i feel like i get up every day like uh getting washing getting cleansed i need to stick to english because this is important mm, i'm not gonna be selfish every day with my twana yes guys hey button on my life i am not lying to you right now why would i i'm a gospel servant listen i not only happened upon indeed what it is that you would usually find when you're cleaning your ear with an ear wipe or a wet wipe but like it was green 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 you guys green especially on this side it was green green you guys green what is going on over there it was brown and reddish and green the reddish was coming from some blood why why did i bleed somebody please explain to me it's not like i was gauging my ear making it bigger making a bigger hole like from a 16 gauge to a 14 gauge it's not that's not what i was doing no 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 no, no. i was not going from in, in, in is, i think that the, the regular ear hole is i think it's it's 18 guys is it 18 or whatever but it's not like i was going from a regular hole to a slightly bigger one in order to accommodate perhaps like uh, this 16 gauge monstrosity over here like this um what do they call this it's not a horseshoe but it's a amper horseshoe or smiley whatever you get my point it's not like that's what i was doing what's I've, up huh? what's up i've <laughs> gauged before my ears and after gauging i do get swelling and sometimes oozing yeah funny little weird stuff like that that happens and it's gonna happen for like a whole month and before it subsides altogether i, I didn't gauge i used a regular 18 gauge earring <laughs> and i bled not only, not only did i bleed but some green stuff was there alongside the color of rust which would be like a reddish brown orangish color uh and it was all up in all over my ear and there was just so much of it that i kept i had to keep on like wiping down my ear i had to go and grab a second wipe and go in again yeah i did that on both ears it was not that bad on this side but on this side it was especially spectacular and i'm like as in this is giving extinction level event like i'm sorry it was just giving like you know mess with the water supply so as to depopulate like i'm sorry like yo i, had, I better be careful what i say i'm jim i best to be very careful i must be because if i'm not careful my stuff gonna get brought down and i like my channel so we don't want to do nothing other than nature hey guys eh? here it is that i'm cleaning the ear okay and this green stuff is like getting wiped off 
and it's all like callous it gets cockified now and it's coming out with blood and like coagulated blood and whatnot and i'm like whoa, whoa i've never like guys i've had ear irritation in the past before because of wearing heavy earrings like one of those dangling chandelier earrings you know them how it is that by the end of the day you out here like like properly it's like it's almost tearing your ear down so that can irritate you and then after that irritates you, you take it off and maybe you might get like you know that a uh, pussy that yet you know, you know when pus goes dry and it's like orangey yellow and it's crusty you might get that because you were wearing a dangling heavy earring or sometimes when you wear clip-ons you know clip-on earrings how does that they can uh, like eat and uh, no way at your ear until you're like i can't do this anymore and you throw them away so the clip-on earrings can also produce that but barely ever do they actually produce blood especially from a whole from a, a, an, a an earring hole that was there since you were like two years old for crying out loud it's been healed for decades it's been healed for decades so why in the world under heaven are we getting blood coagulated why in the world are we getting green why are we i mean i can understand maybe some of the rust coming off but what is going on over there let's keep up with my heart now didn't sang no somebody somebody tell me i need to know i need to understand what's going on like i said it's giving cold bed on a genocide level it's giving mass extinction it's giving culling it's giving depopulation i'm sorry <laughs> like i say i like my youtube channel i really do i like it uh even though it's going nowhere and don't nobody listen to a sister yeah it's under the channel yummy nicer to stay there even with its scant views with five people looking at me i'm still filling my channel because it's all my hard work so i best to be careful about what i'm saying i'm saying mm. but i'm just saying this is giving holocaust like i'm saying Yo, I'm just saying, it's giving, yo, it's giving Hitler, like, <laughs> eugenics. <laughs> it's giving eugenics. <laughs> it's giving Margaret Sanger, Planned Parenthood. Like, I'm just saying, like, yo, I pick a devil genocide. Like, what? Nah, something is not humbering here. I can be, it's not, uh -uh. like, something is out of work here. I'm begging out here in these streets. I'm probably like thoroughly, finally, for once. Y'all be trying to get me to beg. This time I'm doing it. Why is the back of the green? Hey, why did my ear get green? What was that green stuff coming out? Somebody tell the sister what that green stuff was. I need to know. I'm begging. At this point, I am begging. I don't beg, y'all. No, I don't do that. I diss. I don't beg, but now, tail is between my legs, yo. I got my tail between my legs, and I'm like, nyang, nyang, please help me. I need to understand why I is oozing green out of the ear. Please. Like, I need to know. I need to know, y'all. It's giving Holocaust. I'm, yo! It's giving, like, mass extinction. Like, ooh. It's giving dinosaur. It's giving dodo. It's giving mammoth. It's giving saber-toothed tiger. Like... It's giving endangered species, like, <laughs> uh, but like for us, but like what kind of us though? Now y'all need to understand what's going on. And as in guys, I mean, like I said, like, I'm pinching the nose. I gotta think. I come and this is not nice. The situation. I know how it, buddy. I apologize, and I give my swabby. I'm so, I'm so. I've apologized, and I've also begged in one video. Y'all know that's a miracle. Mmm. Why was my ear green? Like, why was green coming out of the ear? That's not the end of that story. Let's just put that out there. It don't end there. It don't end there. <laughs> You're not gonna believe this. This horror movie has, like, these sequels. And every sequel is a day. So, I mean, like, proper. It's been, like, what, three weeks? So, we are just dealing with, like, 20 other sequels after, like, movie number one. Scary movie number one. Now we in scary movie number 21. Three weeks later. Oh, it might be scary movie number 14. And uh, it's depending. On whether it was new year's that this happened or christmas but bottom line is it's been a horror movie ever since like air day <laughs> help us out somebody assist please like i said i mean i don't and when i'm and you know it's hard knock it's genocide yeah south africa algeria at this like funny meeting overseas at some court trying to accuse israel of genocide like take a i'm looking at the man in the mirror go and grab the sibugo grab the sibili please somebody somebody grab the mirror 
Hello, if I Cyril Ramaphosa, hello, the Cheba Mospiling, hello, first judiciary, I'm a South Africa, a mirror. Somebody give the South African judiciary. All them lawyers are just standing against Israel. Look in the mirror. Somebody out here taking you to some strange court to accuse you of attempted genocide. They don't know when to come. Nya, you're my life thing. Somebody batung. Tikuparitli sang host pipe ends like snuff this fire out, Dumarana. You're not gonna snuff it out. You be out here thinking I'm in trouble. <laughs> I nearly was. I nearly was. But I'm cool. Because I got that immune system on fire. Survival of the fittest. Natural selection. Is that what's good? Whoever can survive the gangrene in the ear. I guess you is the real deal. Because you've always had that immune system. But what about Lomundu that does not quite have? That immune system that bounces back. Let's talk about the horror movie sequel number two. So horror number one, number one was the fact that my ear was like guang guang in an hour. Horror movie number two was the fact that after wiping that stuff down, there was green coming out of my ear. <laughs> green. Hello, to Nelly Tala. Is it green Tala or is it red? Chibedu, who bedu king? Get red anchor. And then Tala, you're gonna hold it Tala, guys. It was Tala, and I was like, whew, okay, something is, is, is wrong, Lana. So I told myself, I got a faller, and I just wrote it off as, I, I guess I'm one of those now, right? I'm one of those people now that is sensitive to some bad jewelry. Yeah, if it's fake, I ain't feeling it. Maybe I'm becoming special and important. Maybe I'm being graduated to the level of snobbery, like my friends were snobs on some, I can't hear his bad jewelry, it's gonna eat my ear. I mean, I was like, yeah, get ready, right, I'm gonna buy those chandeliers that hang on my ear that are fake from Chinatown because my body is strong. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, maybe now I'm like my ex-friends. Mm. So I was like, I guess people change. My genetic makeup must have changed like overnight or whatever. Mm. So I can't take this no more. But like, it was the horror movie number three, four, five, all the way up until 21, the sequels, that made me realize, Wuti, and uh, this is something wrong. Something right, something right, yo. Yo, something right, eh? Something right. Like, if you're, it's a genocide, like, hey, something right. Guys, it's like the 14th of January. I did this last year, and I'm still peeling my ear. <laughs> I don't know if I can show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's the 14th of January and I am still healing. <laughs> That's where it is that the earring was. <laughs> this side is not so bad. This side I'm completely recovered. I'm healed as you can see. There's no scarring or anything of that nature. All you see are just like the holes that are there. That's the side. There, that's the holes. This side, I am still look. Look, it's all black. Like, and this one is red. It's got like, uh, it's uh, what do you call this? Like calloused skin, like scabbing. I'm still scabbing. Fourteen days later, or twenty-one, depending on when I did this, I am still scabbing. Two weeks down the line, from an earring I wore in a hole that was there since I was, uh, I can't even remember getting pierced. So I was likely like a baby, two years old or whatever. And I'm like 39. And I have been wearing regular machine jewelry all my life. I be out just dangling some heavy fake jewelry on my ears and around my neck all my life. And I have never had this kind of reaction on my ear. Uh, to a point where 14 days later, I'm still scabbing. I also have pierced lots. I've got a lot of holes on my ear and I self pierced. And I put, well, during the time when I pierced myself, I did not have money, I've been broke all this time. All of these holes in my ears, I put them in now, now, in all of this sorrow. Like, I did this all myself, okay? I pierced my own conch, my own tragus, my own whatever. Uh, the only thing that I went professionally to get done was my industrial, but everything else, all of this, was me, okay? I did all of my piercings, La Paya, Ana, these over here, the helix, the these two tragus piercings, Ngizenzel. Right here, Mojagadeng. Uh, and during the time that I did that, because I've always, I've just been broke for the past like million years, okay? So I did not have the, the jewelry like uh, titanium steel or uh, rose gold, basically what it is that you can pierce with safely, um, according to the standards 
the, the health standards or whatever. I grabbed all of my old jewelry that I bought, including the Mokokotela Fong Kong. I grabbed all of it, I put it in some uh, alcohol solution, whatnot. I left it there. I used hand sanitizer to wipe it down and all that jazz. I wiped down my ear and I used that to hold my, uh, basically the holes in place after piercing. So I would, I used a needle to pierce like a regular sewing needle. Yeah, Papa, I did that. I hurt myself, but I ain't got no regret. I'm just saying. Anyway, whatever. I used a regular sewing needle. I only gauged later. Like I never pierced with the right sized needle ever. I would first pierce with a small little 60 18 gauge the regular one yeah and then i gauged it so i i gauged it once i healed like once i was completely healed that's when i went to low visa and bought um sizes like this like this kind of size of earring the uh, king of, of jewelry this kind of size of jewelry over here i went and i bought that like that with the round stopper or even the flat back that you're looking at over there or even the size of a horseshoe uh, i gauged with that and it always hurts to gauge like no man's but it just it hurts like uh, this one is a 16 gauge it's it's thicker even than than the ones that are inside my conch not my conch my uh tragus and my conch it's thicker i gauged that too like i basically stretched it and that's why i keep my jewelry on because if i were to take it off they would shrink down to that um tiny little size again and then i would have to gauge them and it would hurt all over again so i just keep it in and i sleep with it blah blah all that jazz cool <clears throat> now that you understand all that okay now that you you, you gauge understand all that you must uh, gauge that i pierced myself with a regular sewing needle and I believe so sewing needles are made from titanium steel. Okay. Um, yeah, if you're wincing, yo, it's my journey. It's what I've been through. Like when you get put in a hole for 10 years, you will change and you will do stuff that you never used to imagine you could ever do before. So that's what under heaven that I've been going through doing. But my whole piercing endeavors ended years ago, like maybe two or three or four years ago is when I last had like pierced. Okay. Cool beans. I used regular jewelry from long ago, like jewelry that I've always had that was just kind of chilling in my stash. I used that to basically hold the hole in place. I would pierce with that needle and then I would put that earring in and put a stopper behind it. I told you guys that I don't struggle with allergies or funny little reactions, izzy, whatnot. So once that earring was in, I, I just left it there. I just left it there for like a very long amount of time uh, to heal in that state. I would sleep carefully the only time that it hurt was when i touched it i put vaslapa near it or whatever but under normal circumstances it was just like this i felt nothing like when you've pierced your ears the only time you feel that you've just pierced your ears is if somebody grazes you or touches you otherwise it feels like nothing at all right once you've got the jewelry in that's how it was because i don't have allergies and I also don't react negatively to different metals in me, whatnot. Like, I just, I don't. I don't have adverse events on my body. It's just been that way for a minute. For a minute. A even my lip, there was a time when my lip was pierced. I think the hole might still be there, but I took it out. You all know that um, I pierced that myself. But I pierced my lip with a needle like this, like a thick one, because I, I already had the jewelry when I did that type of So I didn't have to gauge my lip. It was already kind of the right size when I got the right jewelry type establishment thing. But even some such a such sensitive such sensitive tissue as my lip, never did I ever get any funny little bumps, lumps, stumps, like odd little funny little weird thingies that appear. Nothing. Nothing. I healed swimmingly, swimmingly, do you understand? Nothing broke me, nothing shattered me, nothing massacred me, nothing decimated me until now. I used regular jewelry, fake jewelry in a raw ear, in a freshly pierced ear. So it's basically making contact with my tissue inside and it's making contact with my blood inside. And it could wreak havoc, but it never happened. Instead, I healed. Once I healed, I took the earrings out and I put in so that the holes don't close. Matokwane, like sticks, like wood. Matokwane, goodness, I don't know how to describe that. It was like straw sticks. Yeah, that's how it is that we in the black com in, in villages and in black in the black community before stoppers were innovated and whatnot, they would use you know like that broom that you use to swish that that um what do they call it goodness gracious like i don't even know a, a straw broom straw broom straw broom straw broom straw broom 
my top one if you like my top one guys yes like it but like what in the world um but like the kind yeah y'all know what i'm talking about like what in the world like that that stuff those reeds over there that's what i used to basically but like from instead of it being straw broom type establishment thing it was what do you call this um where did i get it from i think my top one i like it was from any was it an actual broom that we had i don't know washed it up and whatnot and i put it there i cut like a whole bunch of them is in no there was a light that i had that was made from wood straw like little reeds and whatnot and i chopped up a whole bunch of those and i would put them in and they were very small very tiny and i put them there and my earring healed yeah that this is the one that is uh used quite a lot in black culture i used the reeds of this broom type setup thing but it was from a side lamp that had similar kind of establishment thing and i put them in there and i healed and even with the straw broom thingy my bobbies i never got problems anybody out there giving me issues like i just healed and now i don't have anything in the holes that are there without any jewelry i bet you can see there's a hole there there's a there's holes here what what now there's nothing right you can see if you come in close proximity to me you can see that i have got holes for days on my ears i pierced myself uh type establishment thing very well and all that healed swimmingly over like a couple of weeks a couple of months and after a year i was able to completely take out everything and just like just walk around like my holes are not closing they they're pretty much there they're done they're dusted they're not going anywhere i can put in new jewelry anytime that i want to no issues no problems no what's going on left right and center are we going up or down nothing you guys until now until now the jewelry that i used in order to basically keep my holes open after piercing was jewelry that i bought when i was still employed cheaply at all different kinds of stores in the south africa including chinatown yeah that's a jewelry that i used it was nothing new nothing that i bought anyway it was old jewelry from long ago the jewelry that my mother purchased that is that was chilling in her little stashy kimon bobby is jewelry that she bought this past well the part 2023 she bought it last year just in this past year that has progressed that's when she bought that and um guys i don't know what in the world happened after 2020 to this planet but some strange things have been getting manufactured in our stores yo some strange things have been allowed to just slip underneath the carpet in our fmcgs in our food in our um jewelry who knows maybe even in our medication something is messing with human beings and i i just it's causing issues that human beings never used to historically have and i out here had that situation and i am still peeling every morning i wake up with like a bulb of blood that is dry calloused underneath this ear and i have to like just remove it or something every single morning like i'm still freaking oozing a whole like oh three almost three weeks later three to two to three weeks later i'm still oozing since i fall and just two days ago i was like yo never in my life have i ever worn jewelry that kept me injured for so long and the only thing that's ever injured me in the past was the heaviness of jewelry never the quality it was always if it's too heavy and it's weighing down on me and so maybe it's cutting into me or something like a chandelier earring but ne like that was a stud it was a tiny little lightweight stud and it did that to my ear and two weeks later i'm still bleeding now y'all know that rust r-u-s-t rust when it goes in the blood stream it is poisonous y'all know that right rust can kill depending on the amount of it depending on the amount of it rust can kill so if you've got like a a wound like if you are working on a construction site and something you know that has rust in it cuts into you you have to immediately seek medical attention have stuff done have doctors look at it basically you know disinfected whatever it is that they do you know the, the 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 wonderful work that they do there to patch you up you gotta get that looked at immediately because if you let it just linger if you get cut by something rusted and you don't seek medical help for it that will spread into your bloodstream poison you and effectively kill you if you don't get it looked at on time so just in case you did not know that that's a thing those of you that work with m m metal m m metallurgy those of you who work with metals but you did not go to engineering school to understand how these things operate as they come together with the human body let this be a lesson learned for you okay 
you cannot get cut by a rusted knife, a rusted anything without getting that looked at by a doctor and not have that thing spread a toxin, a poison in your blood. But there are levels of poison that can be lethal. Others, however, are not lethal. In other words, it is a poison. It's going through your bloodstream, but you've got this immune system that is fighting it off and your liver is going to do the work, your hepatic system or whatever, hepatic system, hep what in the world? Anyway, whatever, the liver system, the one, the system that drains out all of the toxins out of your body, it might work real beautifully for you such that if you cut yourself with a rusted knife, you'll heal anyway, because your body was that, you know, boom, you that girl, you've got all those antioxidants in your body, you eat healthy, you exercise, and so everything works out on your behalf. But other people's immune systems are not that strong. Uh, South Africa has got quite the epidemic of HIV all over the show. And so people who have got comorbidities like HIV, like an autoimmune disease, anything at all that basically just kind of messes with your immune system, you don't want to get yourself cut with rust. You don't want to get your, yeah, you know what I'm saying? But like most people don't just walk around like, you know, as little children. Like when I was a kid, actually, I've got like this wound. I don't know if I, I yo, if I showed you, I'm, you're going to see tang alam non get all up in your grill. You're going to see my thigh. But I got cut by like a rusted little funny thing that my grandfather was using. Uh, he, he had like this whole work workshop. He was a welder, a wielder, whatever, like one of those DIY guys that like do stuff. Anyway, whatever. And his workshop. My cousin and I were playing around it and one of his metals that were rusted basically just kind of wiped out, scraped me down below over there in my leg and opened a whole big fat gaping juicy meaty hole and it was really painful. I didn't go to a doctor for it. I didn't get seen. My grandmother's the one that did everything. Um, however, my grandmother did do a whole bunch of washing, disinfecting and whatnot using sunlight soap and blah blah blah. Band did it. Bandaged it. And so now I've got the scar down there that I can see, which I had gone to an ER, a doctor's rooms, so they could basically make it smaller. Um, anyway, whatever. But I have been pierced or poked by rusted stuff before. Uh, also, when I was a kid, a bicycle, I told you, I would show you these scars if I wasn't wearing shorts, but I'm wearing shorts. Um, a, a bicycle, I guess some dude knocked me over like a bicycle. And then like a rusted piece of his bicycle, like which just stabbed my calf and went down. And all that was dealt with by my grandmother, you know, patched it up, like used all different kinds, again, sunlight, dishwashing, not dishwashing, but getting a green bar soap. She put it in, boiled it and stuff, whatever. She did some nursey stuff and it helped, right? It, it cured me. So rust in and of itself, when it goes into you, is not, can be, um, eradicate it insofar as you disinfect it and it does not always have to be lethal, but large amounts of it, large, large, large amounts of it can kill if not um, paid attention to, large amounts of it can also lead to an amputation if at all it's busy spreading. Like imagine a vampire biting you or a zombie and then like somebody chops off your hand so you don't convert, so you don't turn altogether. Yeah, sometimes your whole hand can be cut off so your whole body doesn't turn dead uh, type establishment thing. But that's like usually very high levels of rust and sometimes never mind high levels of rust, but also low um, immune response. Your immune system is compromised for a myriad of reasons, whatever might be the reason why your immune system is low. And so you are just passing away from something that a lot of people survive. You are just passing away from something that most people kind of get through the day concerning. If you don't get it looked at, if you don't get it dealt with, if you don't take the right medication for it, you're going to be in trouble. So given that rust has got that potential and at the time when my grandmother was basically was tending to my wounds on my foot and on my calf, given that she did all that disinfecting, what in the world under heaven can happen to you when you've got just this like un- monitored release of rust into your bloodstream from an ear due to what do you call this like a uh, what, uh, what you might call this uh, like a poor quality earrings poor quality earrings like if rust upon entering the bloodstream can poison it ought it not therefore be part of legislation or something you know in these spaces like you know compensation for occupational injuries and diseases act Maybe that's like a whole thing for people who are working in construction because they could get cut by rusty stuff. But um, what in the world happens when you're not in the workplace, but you're at play and you're not even paying attention to the fact that there is something rusting into your bloodstream from your ear? What the heck, guys? This thing has been chilling. And I'm still scraping it two weeks later, three weeks later, depending on when I, I did it. 
I am so square. There's literally blood that oozes from this, like, Papa, ear, ear putation. Ear putation. The amputation of an ear. Like, is that what we're dealing with over here? I mean, I don't think so, but remember, because of how pained my ear was, I ultimately went in with that aloe vera wipe, like, a whole bunch of times. 24 hours later. The fact that I did not take off that earring immediately, but I kept it on, was the problem. And my ear continued to get dissolved, fizzled away at, it was eaten. It, it's like I was wearing a sulfuric acid earring or a hydrochloric acid earring for crying out loud. And after I finally took it out, there was green. What was the green showing me? I mean, goodness, guys, well, what produces green in a wound? I, you know, you know what? Like, let's, what, um, what, what is the green stuff released in a wound? What is the green stuff in an open wound? Stuff in an open wound. Like, I, I just need to know what that is. Because that freaking got secreted. Like, it did happen. Who in the world buys a broom for $26? You know, America. What in the world? How did I end up inside Amazon? I'm busy clicking on these funny brooms. You be out of buying brooms for $30. It is no wonder everybody's coming at your dollar. Like, if you convert $30 to rands, it would be an unacceptable price for any broom in this country. Wound. What is that green stuff? What is that green stuff in a wound? In a wound. I apologize, guys. I need to know. Cold. Thank you. Like, never mind. Oh, gross. It's called purulent drainage. Ooh. Ooh. Akusa gross, Apa. I need to actually be charging that phone with the very charger that this phone is plugged into. A purulent drainage is easily spotted as it is thick and can vary in color from grayish or yellow to green and even brown. Ugh. Purulent drainage. Ooh. What is the green stuff on my... It's thick, milky, and even changes color if the infection progresses. I was infected for crying out loud. Green, yellow, brown, or white color. A wound exhibiting purulence is plagued with pus, a sign of infection. If the pus appears to be green, yellow, brown, or milky white in color, it indicates progression of an infection. Mm -mm -mm. It indicates, let's read that again. Purulent, pu purulent drainage is thick, milky. I told you guys that I was brownish, reddish as well. And that crusty stuff that's like, you know, it looks like crust, it's kind of yellowish. It's still like to this day. <laughs> Purulent drainage is thick, milky, and even changes color if the infection progresses. Green, yellow, brown, or white in color. A wound exhibiting purulence is plagued with pus, a sign of infection. If the pus appears to be green, yellow, brown, or milky white in color, it indicates a progression of infection. What in the world? Woo! Guys, listen to this. What is the green tissue in a wound? This is another question on Google. What is the green tissue in a wound? Sloth. Okay. Also necrotic tissue. Right? Is a non-viable fibrous yellow tissue which may be pale greenish in color or have a washed out appearance formed as a result of infection or damaged tissue in the wound. Look, I don't really like... Uh, okay, you know what? Like, let's read one last one. Is green wound discharge normal? Okay? <laughs> let's read this. Is green wound discharge normal? Normal wound exudate is often clear, yellow, pink, and red. <laughs> let's read that again. Normal wound exudate is often clear, yellow, pink, and red. However significant red drainage may require a closer look okay so i'm like i'm just still bleeding as the wound may have active and ongoing bleeding and green is likely a sign of pseudomonas infection of pseudomonas infection and is usually accompanied by an odor <laughs> Purulent is deemed the most severe exudate type. Mm -hmm, guys. <sighs> Green is likely a sign of pseudomonas infection and is usually accompanied by an odor. Purulent is deemed the most severe exudate type. So basically I had the most severe type of exudate. Whatever that is, whatever it is that was happening on my ear was the worst kind of infection. From an earring? Yo. We got some problems. We we got is green pus good or bad? No, I, I don't think I need to 
Okay, let's read this one last time. Is green pus good or bad? Green pus is a potential warning sign of a pseudomonas bacterial infection caused by a bacterium called pseudomonas aeruginosa. This color of pus is often accompanied by a foul odor, a possible indicator of a staph infection or a strep. The kind of like, yeah, okay. The stuff that gives you pneumonia. Yeah, a brown pus infection could be associated with liver infection. A brown pus yeah liver infection okay cool so i spoke about how it is that the liver sometimes can drain out all of this random rubbish in your body but like if this stuff is coming from your ear guys and it's like in a whole earring and a good like almost month later i'm still out here healing like i guess so fully this is i don't know when this is gonna completely subside to a point where i no longer feel uh scabbing underneath my ear when i touch it and without me waking up in the morning with like a bulb of blood underneath there is my ear gonna get amputated like yo <laughs> am i gonna get ear putated is that gonna happen like i need to know i told you this is giving cadaver r.i.p it's giving like cold bed it's giving crematorium it's giving on a mass scale it's giving mass grave <laughs> why are such freaking dangerous earrings being sold in our stores <laughs> yo, what else are they doing to us <laughs> what's in our food like rust in a wound is dangerous but rust if you were to grab a rusted item and put it on your closed flesh it's just going to make you dirty but it's not going to infect you it only infects you when it's in an open wound that thing it was gold when i put it on my ear it rusted in my ear and cut it and made a wound it's freaking corrosive it is corrosive. It ought not be in anybody's ear. It ought not be in anybody's nose. It ought not be in any, and there are tissues on the body that are a lot more sensitive, like noses. Like if a person, for instance, um, okay, let's move to the next part so we can continue to have this discussion because I'm getting to a point.